good evening and welcome back to the current affairs lecture that we have been doing uh, there was a pause there was a break as uh, the last lecture the last week we did not take any lecture now we'll be covering the last two weeks the important topics that we have uh, seen in the last two weeks from the current affair points of view in this lecture okay no not wasting any time so let's get to the issue on hand the first one is niti ayog report on gig economy as we all know <clears throat> in 2018 ilo international labor organization released a report the future of work the changing nature of work sorry that report talked about the fact that how the traditional nature of work has been changing how because of the enablement of technology and right? technology has taken over and that has transformed the whole workspace right even prior to the covid right a lot of companies that were engaged like that were engaged in businesses on completely online theek hai jo conventional method of work that existed that is modern brick based business that is going to be uh, that is go going to get redundant because of the technology technology has revolutionized the workspace all the work is going online to so, niti ayog has now released a report on the gig economy in india okay it talks about the status it talks about the future predictions and it talks about the policy guidelines that uh, it recommends to the government to improve and to improve the efficiencies of this economy improve uh the working of this gig sector to provide social security benefits to people working in gig sector and such things <clears throat> okay we'll be looking at how what is gig economy what is law regarding gig economy in india and how this niti ayog report documents and proposes recommendations to make or bring about changes in that okay in news because this is the official uh, the 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 front page of the official report that niti ayog has released okay niti ayog is not a constitutional body it is neither an executive body it is a statutory body okay oh, sorry it is neither a statutory body it is an executive body okay now constitutional body is liye nahi hai kyunki it is not mentioned in the constitution statutory body is liye nahi hai kyunki it is not made by an act or law what is statute statute means law to so, ye jo this word statutory that has been derived from statute and statute means law statutory means something that has been made by law okay so whenever someone talks about statutory constitutional and executive bodies you should remember th these things ki constitutional bodies are those bodies which are mentioned specifically inside the constitution of india Exe statutory bodies are those bodies <coughs> which are not mentioned in the inside the constitution but they have been made by a parliamentary or state legislature parliamentary law or a state legislature those are called uh, statutory bodies but niti ayog niti ayog actually replaced planning commission even planning commission was not even planning commission was not a statutory body it was also an executive body to so, niti ayog is basically a think tank of the government it is think tank of the government okay and <clears throat> it has a ceo it has a vice chairman and the team of course people are mostly drawn from uh, private sector people are the ones academia industry theek okay? hai most of the people are those who are experts in their fields okay so that is how niti ayog functions <clears throat> it it has superseded planning commission right prior to this niti ayog planning commission existed but the nature of niti ayog and planning commission was very different niti ayog planning commission has a very huge role in uh, like financial devolution to the states but niti ayog does not have that kind of role theek okay? hai niti ayog basically functions as a think tank to the government it does not affect uh, the the law making procedure or it does not affect the financial devolution to the states it on the other hand tries to foster a cooperative and competitive federalism okay it tries to foster cooperative and competitive federalism whereas whereas uh, 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 planning commission uh, the structure of planning commission was such that 
uh, it was a top down approach right planning commission had members from states but most of the policies flew like the the flow of the policy was from the top to the bottom top means center and bottom but niti ayog does not has that much of impact as planning commission has in the financial devolution of course okay it on the other hand tries to foster competitive and cooperative federalism mostly by make by providing ranking to the states on the various parameters of the performance like health index education and all these things okay so it it seeks to foster competitive federalism by providing ranking to the states theek hai this is of course only one dimension that we are talking about about the niti ayog but it talk, it is it is it is more broad than that theek hai to gig economy booming booming the news is that gig economy is booming and workers will triple to 2.35 crore by 2030 says niti ayog report theek hai to this report says that the gig economy in india is booming for example uh, there were two companies like ola and uber uh, they they came into india around 2011 12 theek hai and now you can see now you can see uh, like the number of taxi cabs and the drivers have almost uh, like it has quadrupled more than quadrupled okay it has increased more than four times since that time and these two facilitators or aggregators we'll talk about what facilitators and aggregators are but these two facilitators or aggregators have a market dominance right now and they are operating most of the cabs in india prior to this prior to coming uh, they coming uh, the taxi cab market was not so uh, easily available to everyone right now it is only a matter of tap on your phone and you can access that so of course uh gig economy is booming uh, because of the increased multiplicity of the increase in the numbers of what the platforms online platforms that are providing services without an established brick and mortar business brick and mortar business means jo regular uh, industry jis tarike se operate karti thi uh, brick and mortar business means uh, an office uh, some work, work uh, some working people and everything connected right but now it has become all online right <coughs> okay so what are the major findings of the report india had around 77 lakh gig workers in 2020 and 21 report predicts to this number to go around this number to go around 2.35 crore by 2030 it is around 77 lakh it will almost triple more than triple theek hai to <clears throat> up from 68 lakh in 2019-20 in 2020 and 21 this figure was 77 lakh and 2019-20 prior to that 68 lakh that means we can see the average annual compounding growth rate is also very high right uh, from 68 to 77 lakh almost 10 lakh people added in only one year so the growth growth rate is very high Uh, now gig the people employed in gig economy or uh, the, the we will be taking up the definition but i hope you understand what gig economy is gig economy for the time being is uh, the 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 economy that is not uh, the economy where people employer and employees are not bound by the traditional employee empl employer relationships traditional employee employer relationships mean ki uh, jo ek contact exist karta tha pehle right uh, between uh, the employer and the employee that decided certain kind of working conditions that decided certain certain kind of social security benefits that decided certain kind of deadlines and all these thing that kind of relationship does not exist in the gig economy it is out of that purview theek hai so there are some problems associated with that there are many benefits associated with that that we'll look into in detail in a while <clears throat> So 2.6 percent of the non-farm workforce. Now we all know that India has not been able to actually India has failed to bring out the people from agriculture to more skilled jobs. And we have been talking a lot about how we can bring the people from agriculture because our economy is now proceeding from developing. Uh, to like the more our the the majority of our middle sector is now middle 
uh, income sector is now promoting from the lower to middle uh, to and upper middle class right the majority of the middle class of india is now getting promoted from lower middle class to middle middle class and upper middle class okay but this middle class the growth of this middle class is very limited because we have been trapped into uh, we, we we have been uh, kind of trapped into a situation where we are the, the growth of our middle class is not very high uh, the the incomes are not rising very fastly right so in such situation gig economy can provide a solution right for for almost like 30 years we have witnessed jobless growth we have witnessed jobless growth why because one of the major reason was uh, lack of skill the yeah, skill gap basically uh, in india mostly the well paying jobs needed good amount of skill right uh, and the least skill required jobs were in agriculture sector but gradually uh, people from agriculture sector and we all know agriculture sector is marred by what disguised employment disguised unemployment why because the number of people employed in the agricultural sector are way more than what they should ideally have been but, right the number of people are way more than what agriculture sector needs okay so what india should do is what as a country we should do is we should try to push those people out of agriculture sector we should put them in manufacturing or services sector now we agree that manufacturing and services sector are both skilled jobs right and of course we we understand that manufacturing and services sector are jobs where well paying jobs are available not in the agricultural sector okay agriculture sector is already marred with a lot of problems that we are not going to discuss today okay so this gig economy this gig economy and one of the major reasons that industry has been proposing uh, for this lack of growth is what uh, is the industry the government regulations about hiring and firing of people okay there are a lot of government regulations which need to be followed like for closure of the factories for hiring of people for firing of people a lot of government regulations are there which make it very hard to hire new people train them and employ them and then uh, when people become skilled they leave their jobs right for a better opportunity that puts a cost on the company so that is why people have not been companies have not been very uh, open to uh, this is killing kind of thing right so gig economy here provides us with a solution as we can see the 2.6 percent of non-form workforce is a great number right and it composes non form ko agar mila bhi de it is 2.6% of non form matlab jo industries aur manufacturing aur services mein jo jobs available hai uska 2.6% akele gig economy mein hai right 2.6% now gig economy is not a skilled job very importantly we 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 need to consider that it may consist of people having skilled jobs but it majorly in india at least constitutes of people having uh, unskilled jobs or low skilled jobs right and it is also gig economy also consists of the unorganized sector right so it is very important to understand that gig economy can have both skilled and unskilled jobs plus it also consists of the unorganized sector the gig workforce is, is expected to expand 2.35 crore by 2030 okay at present about 47 percent of the gig, gig work is medium skilled jobs 22 percent in high skilled and 31 percent in low skilled as i said majority of jobs are low to medium medium skilled jobs in gig economy okay okay like uh, majority of people in gig economy are uh, the delivery boys the deli people who are making deliveries to us uh, the people in manufacturing sector Okay. the people in construction sector construction sector is actually the largest employer of gig economy okay so people in this gig economy majority of the people are what <clears throat> middle to uh, low skilled jobs okay trend shows that concentration of workers in medium skills is gradually declining and that of low skilled is gradually inclining oh declining and the low skilled people are increasing 
करेंटली अराउंड फोर्टी सेवन परसेंट ऑफ पीपल आर मीडियम स्किल्ड बट द ट्रेंड्स आर शोइंग दैट द नंबर ऑफ पीपल इन मीडियम स्किल्ड जॉब्स आर ग्रेजुअली डिक्लाइनिंग एंड द नंबर ऑफ पीपल इन लो स्किल्ड जॉब्स इन द गिग इकोनॉमी आर ग्रेजुअली इंक्रीजिंग ठीक है तो दैट शोज दैट दैट शोज दैट देर आर रीजन्स देर आर सर्टन रीजन्स ड्यू टू विच वन ऑफ द रीजन्स इज गिग कोविड ठीक है ड्यू टू कोविड ऑल्सो अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल वर्क फ्रॉम होम worked as freelancers and they constituted uh, like good amount of people who for example in software in it theek hai such people did not have to uh, join a company com- uh, like in, in the traditional form of an employer employee relationship actually they what they did was they took up jobs as what uh, they they sometimes took up as second job theek hai as a freelancer and then they worked as a gig employee or a gig worker and that is why the number of people in the 47% almost half of the people in gig economy are today medium skilled jobs theek hai but the trend show that the trend show that the number of people in the gig economy who are in the mid skilled or medium skilled jobs are declining and the people in the low skilled jobs in the gig economy are increasing it also shows that it can also be inferred that the number of people in unorganized sector theek hai uh, are more number of people are in the org- unorganized sector are now becoming the gig workers are now becoming gig workers how more number of platforms are coming right more number of platforms are coming and the platform workers or gig workers as we say actually they both have a different definition theek hai but for the sake of the argument we will for the like most of the sake of the argument they will can be considered one and same so we can see that number of people in the low skill jobs are increasing okay <clears throat> another drivers and sales persons are accounted for more than 52% of work gig workers in 2019 and 20 like zomato theek hai swiggy food panda uber eats all these apps are are employing these delivery boys fir uh, sales people in insurance sector in medicine uh, in healthcare sector theek hai and drivers mostly by uber ola and other such uh, rapido and other such platforms that are providing uh, work to this driver and other sales people so we can of now we can make an observation about the gig economy that majority of people in the gig economy are going to become at least if they are not right now so they are going to become platform workers right now platform workers are people who uh, register themselves on a specific platform like uber ola theek hai and then they perform their work when workers are classified by industries okay like industries means manufacturing construction services okay so when workers are classified by industries report said, said that 26.6% workers were involved in retail trade and sales and about 13 lakh were involved in transportation sector okay the transportation sector is the largest employer transportation sector means of course what we are talking about is the cab delivery cab services and uh, uh, these rental cab services uh, these outstation cab services theek hai aur ab to buses bhi aa gayi hai right so majority of the people were employed in transportation sector majority of the people in gig economy were employed in transportation sector and roughly 6.2 lakh people were employed in manufacturing and 6.3 lakh people were employed in finance and insurance sectors now one important point to note here is india india is a major provider of human resources in it and software now it is also becoming gradually a major provider of uh, workers or human resource in the finance sector okay and that is why you can see 6.3 lakh people were employed in finance sector also now uh, gig workers and gig economy as we know that government has drafted these four labor codes code on social security code on industrial relations theek hai to such there are four kind of codes so these codes have now clubbed all the previous labor codes industrial dispute codes acts and all these previous acts into four codes so that 
the application of these labor laws can become easier right easier to understand by the workers and their unions and easier to implement by the factories and the government okay so whenever we are talking about the labor sector we will talk the about three parties the first one is government the second one is employer and the third one is worker okay and that is why very importantly ilo international labor organization is also tripartite organization tripartite means there are three parties to the organization the first one is governments the second one is industry and the third one is the workers okay now ministry of labor in its code of social security okay in its code for social security defines gig workers as those workers who are out of the traditional who earn their living okay by activities which do not form the traditional which do which are not bound by the traditional employer employee relationship okay okay and as well as in the informal sector that means gig work gig economy consists of both the new economy that we are seeing platform based economy and of course the informal sector as well theek hai to yahan pe traditional employer employee relationship exist nahi karta to if we classify gig workers theek hai theek hai to gig workers तो गिग वर्कर्स ठीक है गिग वर्कर्स कैन बी क्लासिफाइड इनटू टू मेजर थिंग्स टू मेजर क्लासिफिकेशन द फर्स्ट वन इज इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर द कन्वेंशनल इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर ओके एंड द सेकंड वन इज प्लेटफॉर्म बेस्ड द सेकंड वन इज प्लेटफॉर्म बेस्ड ओके नाउ in formal sector are those people who have been conventionally employed into this sector like vendors at railway stations or vendors uh, in trains of course and vendors like uh, vegetable vendors that we see in our colonies and all these people are informal like they are employed in the informal sector theek okay? hai and platform workers mean the people who are employed by specific platforms like uber theek okay? hai ola ओके, जोमेटो एंड सच ठीक है तो यू कैन सी दैट द ट्रेडिशनल एम्प्लॉय 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 एम्प्लॉयर रिलेशनशिप डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट इन द गिग इकोनॉमी ट्रेडिशनल एम्प्लॉय एम्प्लॉयर रिलेशनशिप मीन्स जहां पे देर इज एन ऑफिस पीपल गो एंड वर्क एंड दे आर देर इज अ स्पेसिफिक कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बिटवीन द वर्कर एंड द एम्प्लॉय which guarantees them work security security of job theek hai and they which guarantees them special kind of social security and all so prior to the implementation of these codes still these codes have not been implemented but prior to these codes coming into being the informal sector employees or the informal sector workers were not endowed with any kind of social security theek hai they were not endowed with any kind of social security but now after this after the formation of code on social security and the four codes what we are talking about what we are talking about is code on social security theek hai code on social security after the like after the coming after the coming into being of code on social security government wants to universalize the social security benefits theek hai it will be it says that the code on social security tries to provide universal access to social of social securities to all the people irrespective of whether they are employed in regular employments or they are employment employed in informal employments theek so when gig workers use platforms like website and applications on phone on laptop or whatever technology based platform so they are called platform workers for the sake of definition theek hai तो ड्राइवर्स एंड सेल पर्सन अकाउंटेड फॉर मोर देन 52 परसेंट ऑफ द गिग वर्कर्स इन 2019-20 एज वी ऑलरेडी सॉ दैट ठीक है
Now, what are the what are some challenges to this economy? First one is localized and urban phenomena. This gig economy is a localized and urban phenomena. Okay. Because urban areas have higher population density. Okay. That means economy of scale can be achieved easily. Economy of scale can be achieved easily. Urban people have higher disposable incomes. And urban people have such necessities which make these platforms successful in urban areas. That is why gig economy is majorly an urban phenomena. Okay. Job and income insecurities. Prior to the coming of social security code, the job and income insecurities exist. Because, because what happens is what happens is if some if some company like Uber hires someone, right? So they are bound to provide them some kind of job security. Job security in the sense that they will not be fired without some legitimate reason, legitimate cause. Okay. Moreover, they will have to they if the employer employer uh, if the employer is trying to fire the person they will have to provide a certain kind of notice period for that person to for him to search a new job okay so that can be considered a job security and income security of course income security means once you get into a job so your pay will not be diminished below like uh, from what you agreed to during the start of your job okay so that is called income security but in such areas uh, like uh, gig economy workers the income security is not a, not very much provided why because most of the people work on incentives and their performance based income they earn performance based incomes okay fair safety issues Many people who are employed in construction sector, for example, or transportation sector, for example, they have, they do not undergo proper training. They do not undergo proper safety trainings, and that forms one of some of the safety issues. And prior to this implementation of social security code and these four industrial codes, there were there was no law regulating uh, what the gig economy. Okay, if we look at challenges and opportunities. Uh, for the new age gig economy benefits can be creation of jobs on a mass scale for freedom and flexibility of work right easy access to services and price advantage to consumers price advantage because a lot of platforms will be competing in this sector and they, there will be what a price competition to put the price down right downsides are inconsistency of services okay Partners arm twisted by service providers. Okay. Partners arm twisted by service providers. Its best example here. Ki for example, Uber, Uber hires a driver. Okay. So it does not designate the driver as employee of the Uber, but it designates them as partners or contractors. So contractors or partners are not covered by any kind of social security benefits. First of all. Second of all, they will have to perform certain kind of, uh, they will have to achieve certain kind of targets. If they do not, if they fail to achieve those targets, the companies are arm twisting them. Arm twisting in the sense that they are hold, withholding their payments, okay, uh, and such many other things, right? Difficult to trust a service provider without recommendation from someone you trust. There are trust issues, okay. For example, uh, this is not important. Challenges for government are the sector is highly unregulated, lack of policies on job structure, tax and privacy, and exponential growth. The growth has been so fast that it has become uh, uh, that for government to regulate and monitor it has become a difficult task. Okay. So I hope <coughs> now code on social security and gig workers as I have talked a lot about the, this code on social security. So central government has now been empowered under the code of social security that the government is going to implement from this year. So now the government, central government, prior to the code of social security, the implementation of the code of social security, there was no access to social security benefits like life and disability cover, accidental insurance, health benefits, 
to the people employed in gig economy and to the people employed in informal sector. Now the central government has been empowered to make laws okay, for the gig workers and the platform. And th the central government can make laws in these sectors which are life and disability cover, accident insurance, uh, health and maternity benefits, old age protection, crutch facility, any other benefit as may be determined by the central government. The power of making such laws is, lies with the central government. Registration of government, registration for availing these, registration on the government portal will be mandatory. Right. So I hope you understood this. There are uh, some recommendations from the government. Uh, the, the, there are these are the recommendations from the report that Niti Aayog has presented and that we are talking about. Code on the recommendation code on social security is as follows. The report recommends for the universal coverage of platform workers through code on social security. Take care, the government is already doing that. And as written is the code in the code, the social security code on social security, the report recommends extending social security measures to gig workers and their families as well, right? And suggests that entry barriers in mobility based platforms should be reduced. Take care. Entry barriers in mobility based platforms like transportation based platforms like Uber and Ola. Entry barriers should be removed so that more number of platforms could make into this sector and the employment generating potential of this sector is very high. Right. And therefore the employment could be generated. It asks for the widespread adoption of hyper local deliveries using two wheelers. Okay and is recommended that skill gaps are bridged by carrying out assessments periodically and trainings. Okay? The skill gap that exists, skill gap means the skill demanded by the industry and the skill of the, uh, the people who are employed in that industry. So the skill gap can be needs to be bridged so that uh, more number of people can be employed gainfully. Okay.